So I have always kind of been this socially awkward person and it's not really super obvious, or maybe it is, I don't know, from the camera because, right, I'm just talking to a camera in my room and that's just what I've become used to, right? But when it comes to events and talking to people IRL, I forget how to talk and I forget how to hold conversations. Now, it actually was pretty bad back in high school or middle school when I was younger. Like, I kind of wish I could go back and retry a lot of the friendships and stuff that I had back then because I was just not good at communicating and not good at socializing. And I've definitely developed those skills. A large part of the, the reason I've gotten better at that is from work, talking with people. I've did a lot of customer service and etc. You know, creating content on YouTube has brought me to events and I begin to socialize with people and I've just gotten a little bit more comfortable with people. My whole point is I experienced that and I have definitely gotten better and this video is going to teach you guys how to get the most from networking events or conferences or just talking to people, how to build those relationships and how to leave a conference bettering yourself and other people. So I just got back from Oracle Open World and the Code One conference from Oracle. And this was a great opportunity for me to meet a lot of technical people. Now going to these conferences is great if you want to learn some stuff and go to these sessions. But I personally think the most valuable thing you can get from these conferences is networking, socializing with other people and learning from the relationships you build from these conferences. So it's really easy to go to a conference and not really talk to anybody, just go to the sessions and then be by yourself. And I've been guilty of that, but I really try to meet at least a couple of people each time I go to a conference. And I'm gonna tell you how to make that happen, as well as what kind of things you should want to come home with when you leave a conference. So to give you guys some context on why I've been going to these conferences, well, I've been creating this tutorial series on a low code development tool that allows you to basically build a thin user interface layer for a database. So on my channel, I do a ton of database stuff and I also do development. And this tool basically allows you to take a database, give it a web user interface without having to know how to code. And this tool is known as Oracle Apex. And being new to this tool this year, I had a lot to learn. So yeah, I could work with the people that know Apex or even work with the Apex team themselves. But one of the ways I thought would be best for me to learn is to actually go to these conferences and attend sessions as well as meet customers and other people using this tool. So one of my clear goals of these conferences was to learn. But afterwards, I realized that the most valuable thing I received was not the education, but the networking. In fact, some of the people I met, I ended up collaborating with for that series, as well as other videos on my channel. So the very first tip I have to building connections at these conferences is one, get rid of business cards. And I know that sounds completely opposite of what you would think, but the reality is people get business cards and more than likely they're never gonna look at them ever again. I can't tell you how many times I've received a business card. What I'll usually do is I'll take a photo of it with my phone so I have it and then I'll throw it away but then I usually end up never looking at the photo ever again. Instead, if you meet someone you feel like you guys click and you want to build a connection, connect with them on LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is like the business professional Facebook where you can connect with people and you can share stuff about your career and all your achievements or whatever else. This is the more appropriate place to connect with people because once you got that connection, it's permanent. You always have that connection. I mean, assuming one of you doesn't delete the other person, but that connection is made and you will continue to see their updates and they'll continue to see your updates. So that is the better way to build a business relationship with someone than a business card. Think about it this way. If I have a business card and I hand it to you, you'll probably feel that in order for you to use that business card, you must have a request, right? You need something of me. So you send me a text or call me or email me with a request. And yeah, you could just send an email saying you want to chat, but more than likely a business card is to say, hey, if you need any of my services, reach out to me. LinkedIn is different though, because it's about relationship building. You don't have to request any services from someone and you've got that connection. You'll continue to see each other's updates and build that relationship. There's plenty of people who have given me business cards and there's never a time where I'm actually going to need their service. And I don't really feel comfortable just calling them up, asking them stuff. But if I have them on LinkedIn, I definitely feel comfortable commenting on their posts saying, oh, congratulations on this new promotion or, oh, that's a cool new project you're working on or whatever it might be. And they do the same for me. Now, maybe it's just because I'm a younger person and 
that's the new way of doing things. I'm not really sure, but definitely feel more comfortable on LinkedIn connecting with people. And the next thing is don't try to connect with everybody because it's kind of like this. You can go deep or you can go wide and the depth is always more valuable. Build a few relationships and try to make them really deep. So hanging out with just a couple of people throughout an entire conference, which might be three to five days. And the next big thing is don't worry about what you can get from other people. I feel like if you go to a conference saying, oh, I wanna connect with this person because I want them to do this for me and I want this person to do this for me, then you're not really gonna get anywhere, right? It should be more about what you can offer these people. So when I start building relationships with people, I ask about what kind of work they do and ask about them versus just talking about, oh, me and me and my YouTube channel or whatever. And naturally they're gonna ask stuff about me as well. So the relationship starts off good where we're asking each other about the other person instead of telling the other person about ourselves, if that makes any sense at all. Essentially, you go through these conferences and these relationships with the idea that you want to help them and you want to better their lives, not the other way around. And as a result, the other people are going to want to do the same for you. And if you build your relationships this way, then later down the road, when you need something or you have an idea where someone might be able to help, then you can reach out to them and they're gonna feel comfortable with that because they know the person you are. But if all you ever do is take, take, and take, people aren't going to want to give because they know you're just going to want more and more and more. Now, all of this content might seem a little fluffy, but it's actually extremely valuable because I can say that I've received almost every job I've ever had through some form of networking, whether it be LinkedIn, Facebook, email, or whatever. It's a direct relationship with a person, which then opens up to a larger opportunity. So all these relationships might not seem super valuable now, but they really do open the doors for you as time goes on. And try to maintain those relationships. For example, I met someone in Las Vegas at a conference and I knew this person lived in Seattle. So when I went to a different conference in Seattle, I let him know I was around and we went out for dinner, had a good time and continued that relationship. Now, if one day I need a job and I know they're hiring, he could at least help me get an interview, get me some connections in that company and really help me set myself apart from the rest of the applicants. And no, this doesn't always just apply for getting jobs. It's also just about building your business, right? I do sponsorships for different companies and I went around to these different booths talking to them about their products, how they are different than the rest of the products, and also sharing a little bit about the content I create on YouTube. And some of the companies were like, yeah, yeah. I mean, we might be interested. You know, maybe we'll reach out to you if we want some sponsored content. Although the result is not immediate, it's a much more efficient way of getting a long-term successful business because all these companies are gonna know me at a personal level and know that if they reach out to me, I'll probably get back and I'll probably deliver a high quality product, which would be sponsorships, because they met me in person and they realized I wasn't a total scumbag. When you leave a conference, the thing you should expect to get from this is a few connections, you know, five people maybe, that you could have a good conversation about business stuff or whatever you guys are working on. And it's almost like a friendship. It's someone you could reach out to in a few months, just ask them how they're doing. And they'd be like, oh, hey, nice hearing from you. How are things? And you can continue to build that relationship. Now, this is going to be exhausting, especially if you were an introvert or a little socially uncomfortable, but it is a good social exercise, right? Like you're going to get better if you do it more times. So the first one, you know, that might be really hard just to go up to someone and be like, hey, I have a question or whatever you might ask them. That might be really hard, but the next one's going to be easier. And the next one after that is going to be easier and it's going to get easier each time. Now, as a disclaimer, I don't think I'm the world's greatest at socializing or anything like that, but I have came a long way just by practicing talking to people and building these relationships. And I think I've developed the skill enough since I've had so much years of customer service that even on my job resumes for technical positions, one of the things on there is I will say, hey, I can code, but I still act like a human, right? I'm not one of those tech people that can't hold a conversation and just want to recluse in my room coding for the entire night. Now, some companies are gonna want that kind of character, but most of the companies I work with, they want a more customer facing kind of person. So it's kind of like this thing, if you're hyper-focused on just getting a result, you know, this is what you want, you might miss it. You're not gonna build those relationships. If instead you try to see every opportunity as a potential growth opportunity, then you're going to meet new people, build new relationships, and ultimately set you in a better situation in the future by doing this. So a lot of the times building these relationships has a delayed payoff effect. So you might not, 
you know, immediately grow your business by talking to someone, but that relationship's going to help you down the road. So it's definitely, definitely worth it. So if you haven't been to conferences or any kind of technical meetups, I'd highly recommend it. It's a great way to build your skills and maybe some of the conferences I go to, you guys will be there and you can come say hi and we can like practice socializing. <laughs> Sounds so weird. So thank you guys. Hopefully this video was helpful. A little different than what I normally do, but just something I wanted to talk about how I get the most out of my technical conferences. So thank you guys. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.